And before the flood came, the people lived to be over 900. Probably one of the reasons is because of this canopy overhead. How the hell could living in a meter-thick pancake of liquefied atmosphere under 100,255 atmospheres of pressure in complete darkness possibly increase your average life expectancy to 900 years? Apparently, he started the electromagnetic spectrum. He energized the universe with his voice. He spoke, and all the radio waves and uh, microwaves and all the energy waves of the universe, the whole electromagnetic spectrum, the universe was energized just by the voice of God. Despite the fact that electromagnetic waves are transverse and carried by photons, while sound waves are longitudinal waves and are simply particles oscillating in order to transfer differences in air pressure, and therefore cannot travel in a vacuum. Oh, but I guess it's God that excuses everything. Bible says God is light, in Him is no darkness at all. So sending your own son, who is also yourself, to be tortured horribly and die cannot possibly be dark? Not to mention having people stoned to death for as much as promoting the worship of other gods than you. The stars actually produce radio waves. Carl Ball's got a great theory on that, that he thinks the canopy of water overhead used to translate the vibration of the stars, the radio waves, into sound waves. So Adam and Eve could hear the gospel story proclaimed by the stars. What the hell? You, sorry, Dr. Bohr, doesn't seem to understand that sound waves and radio waves are fundamentally different in every respect other than that they share wave-like properties, and even that isn't unanimous. Sound waves cannot be polarized, radio waves can. Also, stars do not modulate either the frequency or the amplitude of the waves they emit, so even if they were translated into sound waves by some divine radio, you just get an unintelligible beep or hiss. Not exactly the voice of God. Also, by what? possible mechanism could said 1,024 kilometer thick bubble of water translate radio waves into sound waves? All that would happen if radio waves hit the bubble is that the water very near the surface gets warmed up and hums slightly. And of course none of this would be known by the scurrying surface dwellers 1,024 kilometers below since absolutely all heat and sound for the surface would be filtered out by the sheer volume of water above them. I don't know. Interesting theory. It sure preaches good but sounds terrible. And people say, now wait a minute, didn't plants die? Adam ate plants, doesn't that kill the plant? Well, that, that assumes, of course, that plants are alive. Excuse me. If you look at Genesis chapter 1, verse 11, God said, let the earth bring forth the, green, the grass, the herbs, and the fruit trees on the third day. Then it says, he, he made all the plants on the third day. If you read Genesis 1, 14 through 19, it says, God made the lights in the firmament of the heaven on the fourth day, and then on the fifth day, he made the living things. There's a clear distinction here. Plants made on day three, living things made on day five. Plants are not called alive. That's interesting. Now, in our nomenclature today, plants are considered living. Well, not this one. This is a fake one, but still. Okay. <laughs> we would consider plants alive because that's the way we classify things. But that's not the way they're classified in the Bible. Plants are not considered alive. They're a complex self-replicating food source, but they're not living. See, this is what happens when you interpret the Bible as a scientific document. Like it or not, whoever wrote Genesis, and it definitely wasn't Adam, had not the slightest clue what he was talking about. How clinically lazy do you have to be to not observe, even in the 4th century BC or whenever, that plants are alive? You can watch them grow! You can watch them engage in sexual reproduction using insects or the wind to transfer sex cells. You can watch seeds fall from the plant and see a new plant grow from them. And what exactly distinguishes a complex self-replicating food source from a living thing? Nothing! Let's look at the definition of life. Do plants undergo metabolism? Yes, they do. Do plants maintain homeostasis? Yes, they do. Do they grow? No sh** they do. Do they respond to stimuli? It isn't very obvious, but yes they do. Do they reproduce? Dipshit. Do they undergo natural selection? Yes they fucking do. Hovind, what distant, retarded planet are you living on? Now they're interesting, they grow, they reproduce, but they're not living. And I'll show you why. Genesis chapter 4. Cain brought the fruit of the ground, an offering to the Lord. Abel brought the flock. There's a difference here between the fruit and the flock. You can't get blood out of a turnip. God was not excited about Cain's offering because it didn't have blood. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin, the Bible tells us very clearly. God wants blood. 
Genesis chapter 6, God said, I bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh wherein there is the breath of life. Has to have breath in order to be alive. Well, technically, plants do breathe. Oh, come on, they definitely respire. Genesis chapter 7, verse 14 says, After the, And the beast, and the cattle, and the creeping things, and the fowl, and the birds, wherein is the breath of life, in whose nostrils was the breath of life. So nothing without nostrils counts as alive? Uh, Genesis, or Leviticus 17, talks about the life of the flesh is in the blood. Plants don't have blood. Having blood is not a requirement of living things. Otherwise, jellyfish, sea anemones, and coral, which are all animals and are all clearly alive, would not count as life. And you can't eat that which dieth of itself, according to verse 15. So if it dies of itself, you can't eat it. Well, we wait and eat the nuts and fruit after they fall from the ground, after they fall off the tree. So if they're alive, you'd be violating Scripture to eat them. You couldn't eat anything that came off the tree. You, couldn't eat the, you can't pick the peas and then eat them the next day because it's now off the tree. You know. So no, plants are not alive. The Bible talks about the leaf withering in Psalm chapter 1. It says the grass and, and, and the withers like the green herb in Psalm 37. Isaiah 19 talks about the reeds and the flags shall wither. Isaiah 19 says the reeds shall wither. Isaiah 40 talks about they shall wither. It's not die, it's wither, okay? That means plants die, not that they've never been alive, you divvy. All through scripture you see where plants, uh, they fade, they wither, but they don't die in the sense that uh, humans or animals die. Not dying in the sense that animals die does not logically mean that plants are not alive. And what? Of course plants die! You can see it happen, you clinically lazy fool! A car can die. That's happened to mine a couple times, actually. A computer can die. How many ever had the blue screen of death come up on your computer, okay? <laughs> and your stuff goes to data heaven, right? There's a lot of stuff in data heaven folks would love to go visit, you know, I'm sure, and get some of that stuff back. A dream can die, the wind can die down. This is not the same kind of death. Are you serious? Word games are not evidence. I don't know that you could prove insects are alive in the biblical sense either. I don't know that they have the breath of life. They don't breathe through nostrils, they don't breathe, they just absorb oxygen through their skin. So that may be a question. If Adam stepped on an ant, you know, did it die? Well, was it alive? Or are the insects a complex rep self replicating food source and not alive? I don't know. I haven't solved that one yet. I mean, I was joking about some animals not being alive in the biblical sense, but wow. What little credulity you had has just eaten shit and died. How do you feel? The Garden of Eden was perfect. God made Adam. He was the first man. And you have failed to demonstrate that plants are not alive. You have failed to meet your promise of providing evidence that they are not alive, only a load of Bible quotes, a word game, some conjecture, and a heaping load of intellectual crap. I am not convinced in any sense of the word. 